Let's talk about bokeh, 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 or bokeh, as we say here in Finland. Some knowledge and information about bokeh, coming up. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard, I am a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about the bokeh, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and this time about bokeh. And I came out for a little photo walk to this park and uh, just realized that it's not the perfect weather to demonstrate what the bokeh looks like. I need to come back later in the evening to go downtown Helsinki to do some uh, example photographs with different lenses but that's that's my problem that i'm here at the wrong time which is kind of funny when you realize that you are not doing the way you should but no problem first we need to define what bokeh is before we start uh, you know talking about how to use it and why and when is that um, the word bokeh means and now now i will quote Bokeh is defined as the way the lens renders out of focus points of light. And that's important to understand what's the difference between depth of field and bokeh. You can have shallow depth of field without any bokeh in a way, but you cannot have nice uh, bokeh balls without shallow depth of field. And that's a that's a thing to to understand and and also about the bokeh. Let me let me check that I'm yeah. Is, it's actually a quite new word in photography, and if I'm correct, it was first introduced in 1997 in a photographic magazine called Photo Technique. And uh, it was an article where they started talking about bokeh, so it's fairly new. And before that, we did not talk about bokeh at all. And, and if we go back in history of photography, shallow depth of field is also a quite new concept, because the big names in photography, like classical street photographers, they stop down to get more depth of field, to get everything sharp. And also, they were in the 20s and 30s, and I'm talking about uh, the 1920s and 1930s, there was a group called F4, which was formed by Ansel Adams, and it has members like Edward Weston and Imogen Cunningham, for example. And, and many other great landscape and, and street photographers, well, many landscape photographers. And they, the name came from because they used F64 most of their work or most of their photographs when they were making images. They had a big, big camera and, and compared to the depth of field that we get now with, with smaller cameras, it's, it's totally different. And that's why they needed to use very small aperture to get everything sharp. That was the aesthetics. Is that aesthetics? of that time. And now we have a bit different aesthetics. That's a good thing. We have more tools to make our images. We can hide things with shallow depth of field and sew some nice bokeh balls. And, and I think it's a good thing, but uh, it's a wrong assumption to think that a good photograph needs to be either shallow depth of field or have some nice bokeh balls. That's totally wrong. It all depends on what is your intention and what is your uh, idea of your photograph. What do you want to tell? If, if you want to show bokeh balls, you need shallow depth of field, but then you will hide the environment and make it to look something else that it actually is. And then if you want to show the environment, you need to stop down to get more depth of field. And one thing about uh, bokeh balls that I didn't mention yet, which I should have, is the artificial intelligence in smartphones, when they make, can make a blurry background. And that's not bokeh, it's more of a Gaussian blur. There might be some cameras or phone cameras in the future that can kind of produce real bokeh balls and that would be interesting. Then it's a different thing, but it's still artificial. It's not optically made and it doesn't change between different lenses. Uh, even different lenses have a bit different characteristics of, of the bokeh ball.
and then I came back home and used this setup to test some other lenses too. It was snowing and cold out there, so I decided to come indoors. Looks a lot better. And here are the examples or the images that I took with different lenses and with different uh, uh, apertures. And then let's make a conclusion. And as I said earlier also in this video, which is I think is more important thing is that having nice looking bokeh balls is not a definition of a good image. It depends on what you want to tell. And sometimes too shallow depth of fields and those nice bokeh balls is uh, not telling a story because it will make the whole background blurry and we don't see where it is and what it is that is in the background. If you're making a portrait of a person, for example, in an environment, in a park like this, you want to show that you are in a park like this and show some details in the background. So it's not most likely the best time or the best way to make bokeh balls. But then if you want to make an aesthetic image or some more artsy looking images, well, bokeh ball might be really nice looking or you want to make a product shot with a nice background or an abstract background. You might put some uh, uh, lights in the back and have, have nice bokeh balls in the back. And of course, if you have a certain type of lights in the background, that might be a way of telling stories to having bokeh balls in the background. It, it, it all depends on what you want. And the most important thing is to understand when to have them and when not. So it's not only a one-way street that, yeah, fast lenses and nice bokeh balls is the way to go, which I think is, uh, for too many, the thing that defines a professional photographer. A couple of things that I forgot. If you want some odd shaped bokeh, then you can cut something in a piece of paper, make a hole and put that in front of your lens and adjust it to your likings and get some interesting looking bokeh. And also, if you have a mirror lens, which is a bit of a different type of lens, which I have a video about in my channel and I'll put that link to that video in the description of this video, you can get donut shaped bokeh, which looks pretty cool. You know, I think I've covered everything about this and uh, there is a video about depth of field where there are more information about depth of field and there is a, a small part also about bokeh, so you might want to watch that next. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.